So as quick as I can, I'm going to go through basic the basic uh, functionality of Track Builder and get everyone introduced to uh, what it has to offer. So um, to create um, a new track in Track Builder, it's a simple, simple matter of going to Game Object, Create New Builder Track. Um, and we focus right in here. It just creates a simple oval. It's quite a small track. Um, but as you can see here, uh, the way Track Builder works is we have um, these uh, control points, um, and and they sort of govern how the track works, how they how the curves work, and and and, and various other things. But we're going to go through that in a minute. Um, as you can see here, um, at the top of uh, Track Builder, we have a preview window with just this basic track. Um, we can't see much. Let's just create a directional light and take off this whole bit blue because I hate the blue. So anyway, you can see here. We can preview the track. Um, uh, it also gives you a breakdown of how long your track is. Um, so anyway, we've got along here the top bar, um, and this kind of provides you with access to the various uh, modes within Track Builder. We have uh, Track, uh, Track Boundary, which deals with the boundaries of the track. We've got the bumpers, which are these the red and white um, sidings that you get on race tracks. We also have uh, the textures and the design of the track. We have diagram mode which there is a separate video for this um, and you should have, uh, should be able to see that somewhere or there will be a link to it um, and options uh, which we'll go into at the end. So going back to track um, we have sort of basic functionality here of, of the track itself you can decide whether the track is looped or not. Uh, we can add a new point which basically allows you to just sort of click place something on the track. Let's just click one there and create a whole mess, but it will give us a sort of a new point. Um, and we'll sort of bring the control points out around here. There we go. So we sort of saw some basic track functionality there. We also remove that point that we just created, go back to the normal one. Got layout track points. Um, a better example of this uh, can be seen in the diagram uh, video, but basically with over with layout track points, you can click place these control points on uh, within Unity and just lay down a track within sort of a, within seconds, uh, within a minute. You can have like a, quite a sizable track laid down, um, and it's very useful to use uh, in conjunction with uh, the diagram mode. So check out the diagram video for further points on that. Uh, we've got the resolution here. You can reduce, you can really reduce the track resolution if you want, sort of really low res, res stuff for mobile or really high res stuff for um, you know, uh, desktop. Um, and then we go down to track point. So at the moment we have track point one selected or we can select other track points. Um, oh. But we've got track point and we're in transform mode. So this allows us to, to basically modify the transform position of the track point. Um, we can also go to the control point, and as you can see here, are the curve control points. So we can modify how the curve works on the track. Um, we can also split these uh, control points if you want to have something a bit more, uh, if you want to sort of have more individual curve, uh, sort of, I don't know how you'd say it, but essentially you can see here how the, the, the points are split rather than following each other. Um, and finally, we have track point, which um, I should have come up with a better name of this, but I didn't. But uh, we can essentially we can modify things like the uh, the cant of the track at this point. We can give it a nice camber, a crazy camber if we want. I'll zoom in here to give you a better idea of this camber. But yeah, we can create some of this. And then of course the width. Um, and then these are all sort of variables you can edit here. But also, we can edit them here. As we can see, we've got the, the camber here. That's sort of on the wrong side there. And then you can change the width. And then this camber here can be modified within the editor too. So that's the track points. We can go into track boundary. So at the moment, the boundary of the track is tied to the sides of the track, um, which is fine for certainly street race courses, but for anything else um, you're probably going to want to uh, 
have something more interesting, something that's split. So you can click on this split boundary from track and that will allow you to define um, the boundary sort of outside of the track or inside of the track, uh, as you can see here. Um, there are also you know, sort of basic functions we can render both sides of the boundary. By default, that's off. Uh, but maybe you, you uh, certain parts of your track you can see the outside of the boundary, so you want to render that. So you can see that here. Um, now, one thing you'll notice with my tracks, uh, my, my track here, um, and something I already had turned off, but by default, uh, you know, Unity displays uh, mesh colliders. And with Track Builder, uh, I try to obviously puts this functionality direct, directly into Track Builder, but um, it doesn't exist in Unity at the moment. Uh, hopefully that will be solved later in a later build of Unity. But um, it's ideal, to ideally you want to go to Gizmos and turn off mesh colliders when editing uh, Track Builder because they, they just generally get in the way because you by default have it selected and then it will display the, the mesh, but it's just sort of a whole mess of green that you'll end up seeing. I'll turn it on that for now so that you can see um, the boundary of the of the collider, and here we can sort of modify the height of that collider. We can also turn off the roof of the of this uh, mesh collider if if you wanted to. Uh, by default, that's turned on because you kind of generally want to encase the, your racing track so that the car can't flip off and disappear into the infinity below. Um, but as I said, by default, you probably want to go into Gizmos and turn off Mesh Collider because you don't necessarily need to see it. Um, and it. And it just generally does get in the way. So like before, when you have a point selected in Boundary um, and we have it split points, you can actually, you know, we're in the Boundary Transform, so we can transform the position of the boundary. Um, and again, we have control points that modify the curve of this boundary. So with those two you can create quite a um, quite a complex boundary as we can see in the Spa Francochon uh, example uh, included with Track Builder. Now we also have um, bumpers, but I'm going to skip bumpers because you can't see them at the moment as there are no textures defined. So let's just define our textures. I'm just going to uh, let's see. I'm just going to add asphalt to that, and I'm going to go to offer a texture. I should probably actually introduce people to this section before I start rummaging around in it like I'm at the moment. So we got the texture, and it's kind of textures and designs of the track here. Um, by default, there's no texture selected, so everything just displaces white because it just is a, a, a default uh, material we're using. Um, and I say not just textures because there is one option that we have here which isn't texture based but we can modify the height of the boundary, the, the visual boundary in uh, in this section if you wanted to say have large fences and or something like that. In the future um, there's going to be a few more f functions maybe in this section or maybe there's going to be a separate sort of boundary design function because we're going to want to uh, be able to put in models rather than just this flat plane. This flat plane of a boundary is sort of the first stage of track builder, but in a future release there'll definitely be the option to have sort of tires or um, some something maybe more interesting like a proper chain link fence rather than just this. Um, so anyway, we can change the boundary height, uh, but first we'll jump to this texture. So as you saw just before I, I whacked in um, that asphalt. I'm going to get some sand and have a sandy off-road so I apply that. As you can see these textures are being applied automatically because by default um, Track Builder will use these four textures uh, for everything just for simplicity's sake. Um, but as you can see down here um, I'm selecting textures and the textures are I try and replicate the, the unity layout of a of texture. Um, so what we're doing here, the wall texture, uh, what wall should we go for? I have a nice boundary. Now as you can see here, I've selected the steel sort of boundary, but it's going upwards. So we can flip this clockwise um, 
and that will make you know that just does what it says it flips it clockwise because some textures might go up rather than sideways um, and then we'll go to bumper texture and let's just add that bumper where is it these textures I just took from the car demo that unity has um, as you can see here, we're going to flip this as well. There we go. So now we've got some sort of basic textures to our thing. We'll go back to bumpers now. So bumpers, there's, there's sort of not very much here um, because they're self-generating at the moment. Um, and it's an algorithm that I'm, I do intend to improve slightly because it's it's about it works about 98% of the time. But you can see here there are occasional gaps and things. So. Um, but it kind of gives you the basic functionalities of uh, that, that you'll need. You can sort of change the height if you want it to sort of to go up on the sides a bit, and and then change the threshold angle if you want it to last sort of longer or shorter. There's not much give here because it's a pretty basic. Yeah, you can see it's starting to. Uh, Disappear, but the threshold angle sort of decides when and where uh, the the bound this boundary will come in. The, the bumpers will come in. Sorry. So as you can see, going back to textures uh, by default, uh, track texture, off-road texture, they have the corresponding library textures applied to them. But we can actually select things, and this is per curve. So I've chose, chosen off-road here because I have this curve selected. It says it here. You can go to the curve. Um, but say I've selected this curve and let's just change this to the bumper texture. You can get pretty wacky now. But um, yeah, you can you can have more than one track texture. Say you wanted you had a grid uh, pattern layout that you wanted to assign just to the the grid section, or you wanted different boundaries at different points. Um, this is something uh, you can you can do uh, in this section here. Um, and as I said with uh, the diagram, I suggest go to the diagram video. That's a specific small short video on the diagram. Uh, and then finally, we'll go to the um, options. This is sort of just basic rendering options uh, and generation options for Track Builder. You can turn off the wireframe because uh, sometimes you want to actually see, you know, the 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 where where your textures are lining up, and you don't want those little blue lines of a selected mesh getting in the way. Um, quite useful. We have these three options: uh, build tangents. Um, not necessarily. I kept I kept this as a separate button, like in Builder, because build tangents is a very expensive operation for a gener for for, for procedural generation. But some Mrs. shaders do need them. So once you uh, have completed your track, and, and if you are using a shader that needs tangents, then click on that button to create. Uh, tangents. Uh, build light, light map UVs is uh, the basic sort of checkbox you have when importing, similar to importing models in Unity, and that will allow um, beast light mapping to work in this. And finally, optimize mesh runtime. There's just some minor optimizations you can apply that will um, increase uh, the speed that uh, that your mesh will render at at runtime. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching.